Hi everybody, my name is Jim with Full Moon Adventure Club and I'm very excited because today I'm going to show you how to add tank heaters to your RV. Um, if you don't have a four season RV and you want to make it one, you don't have an enclosed and heated underbelly that encompasses your gray and, and uh, black water tanks and you want to add tank heaters so that they won't freeze up in the winter, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. This is not a crazy hard job. I would say it probably took me about four hours. So give or take, that's going to be the time that it's going to take you probably. And it's really not that expensive to get all the parts for this. I'm going to put a link in the description below that'll take you over to all the parts that I used for this install, um, including some weird little uh, accessories like wire clips and wire ties, but mainly the two pads that I'm going to be using and plus the switch plate that I used in this install. I'm going to be showing you how to add these to your gray and black water tanks. The fresh water tank is usually inside the RV. And so as long as you're in there and the heat's on, it's probably not going to freeze. But if you want to add one to your fresh water tank, I'll kind of, this will give you a really good idea of how to do that. And then I'll also show you how I would have added it to mine. I'm not going to be doing it because I don't think it's ever going to freeze as long as I'm in it. Um, I'm going to go over a couple of little pointers before we get going with the install. Um, number one is going to be that you're going to need to figure out your tank size. And you need to at least look under there to make sure that, to see what kind of space you're working with. Um, my black water tank, uh, the pad fit fine. And then on the, the gray tank, the pad was a little bit longer than I anticipated. I must have measured something a little wrong, so it was just an inch longer. But if you don't have enough room for one big pad, you could always add two small pads, run them in parallel, not a big deal. So, um, but first you're gonna need to know your tank size. So what you're gonna need to do, if you already know, great. Uh, just order the tank pad that's gonna fit and uh, you'll be good to go. If you don't know what size it is, you can get under there and measure, and I'll tell you how really, really fast. You're gonna go ahead and measure in inches the length, the width, and the height. And you're gonna times all those together. So you times, let's say your length is uh, 40 inches, and then it's 20 inches in width, and then it's 20 inches in height. You're gonna times all those together, you're gonna get 16,000 and then you, inches, and then you're gonna divide that by 231, which is gonna give you uh, your gallons. And so that would, that would equal 69 gallons. You probably have around a 69 gallon tank. So just do that measurement. And that's really gonna help you figure out what your tank size is. And now you can move on, get your pads and get going on the install. I would say this isn't a super hard install, as long as you can kind of, you're kind of comfortable with a drill, maybe a jigsaw to cut the hole for your switch plate. And uh, then it's just pretty much running some wires and securing them underneath. You're probably gonna have to drill a hole in the bottom of your RV in order to run those wires up to your switch plate and uh, then to your power. Um, I'll basically run over the real basic thing that we're gonna be covering today. And that's putting on the tank pads onto the tanks. And then you run that wiring all the way to where your switch plate is. And then from your switch plate, you're gonna to have to run to a power source to get your positive and negative power coming from there. Um, it's really important that the first thing you do is really plan your attack. You need to figure out where your tanks are, where you wanna put your toggle switch plate and uh, where that's gonna be. And then you need to figure out what power source you're going off of. You can use your battery bank or you can use your converter in your RV because right there it's gonna have a lot of your 12 volt lights and all that stuff with all the fuses and you can tie into a power source there as well. Um, and so once you have everything planned out with where you wanna put everything and where you're gonna to need to run wire, you'll have a better understanding of how much wire you're gonna need and uh, stuff like that. So really think about it, take a pen and paper, draw it out, sketch it out, figure out where you wanna run everything and then you'll have a really good idea of how much wire and stuff like that you're gonna have and it'll save you some problems down the road. Um, that's about it for the basic stuff. I will give you a couple of tips and tricks before we dive into this. Um, one of which is you need to place the heater near the outlet of your tank. So when you're going to dump your tanks, you have that pipe that goes into your black water tank and another pipe that goes into your gray water tank. And where that pipe goes into the tank, you wanna put the heating pad as close to that as possible for two reasons. First of all, that's the lowest point of the tank. They design them so that the lowest point is gonna be by uh, that pipe, so that all the fluid's gonna run out of it when you open the valve. So you, you want it to be on that low point. Number two is it's also gonna kind of help that entire pipe keep from freezing as well. It'll heat the water in that area and kind of make sure that the water in the pipe is also heated so you don't have an unfrozen tank, but a little section of frozen pipe maybe 
right down by your valve. So put it as close to that inlet pipe as you can and uh, that'll help you out. Don't stretch the pads, just kind of easily adhere them. And uh, one more thing, I don't have any ribs on my tanks, but you might. And what a rib is, is basically a dent in your tank that gives it some structural support. And so if you have a dent in that, you can run your pad inside of that dent and then out. You wanna make sure the pad is touching the tank at all points. Otherwise that section of the pad would get really hot. It would overheat. So you wanna make sure it's all touching your tank and you always wanna make sure there's at least a little bit of water in your tank when you have it on. Otherwise, again, the pads are gonna get a little too hot if there's no water to dissipate that heat. But if you do have a rib, you can just gently mold your uh, pad inside that rib and you'll be okay. Um, just uh, don't stretch it. Just go nice and easy, remove the film as you go and get through that rib. Um, there's some videos on that online if you do have that problem and you, and you don't, it's not quite clear what to do. But other than that, um, I think that's about all I wanted to go over. We're gonna jump right in and start putting these on. Um, you can run two pads in parallel with just one set of wires and go. You could have one toggle switch to turn them all on and that's fine. But uh, if you wanna be able to control each tank individually because maybe the black water tank has water in it and the gray water doesn't. You haven't used the shower or the sink yet so that one's empty and you wanna be able to turn on only the black tank. That's the install we're gonna be doing. I'm gonna install a three plate switch with three toggle switches so I can control all three tanks independently, but I'm not hooking up my fresh water. I might add it later, but for now I'm just doing gray and black, but I have that extra switch in case I need it. Um, and I think that's about all we really need to cover. Let's jump right in and start this uh, installation so we can get this all done. Okay, so we're gonna clean the surface with a wire brush here just to get the big dirt and debris off of there and uh, just kind of rub that off. Then we're gonna use soap and water and just scrub it really good. And then the last but not least, we're gonna be using some rubbing alcohol to make sure that we get every last bit of uh, dirt and debris off of there. So you just rub that down with the rag and the rubbing alcohol, wait for that to dry and you should be good to go. Now here's one of the heating pads. It does come with a directions booklet and uh, some commonly asked questions and also a little fuse holder. You're gonna have to add that fuse. So uh, if you have a short, you're not gonna cause a fire or anything like that. So it's good they include that. Now the pad's ready to go on. We're gonna go ahead and check it to make sure that it fits and figure out where we want it. And again, that's gonna be right by the outlet. We're gonna pull back a little bit of paper and uh, get it kind of lined up and then we can pull off the rest and slowly work our way down to the edge. And then you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and massage the entire pad, putting a lot of pressure all over the place and that's gonna activate the adhesive so it really sticks well. You also need to have a temperature of around 55 degrees when you put these guys on. Now we're gonna do the gray water tank and make sure that you uh, check your dimensions before you get this guy. For me, um, it was just about an inch too long. I must've messed something up. And I'm just gonna wrap that around the uh, edge and that's gonna be okay. It's not gonna hurt anything for me. But if you have this problem, you can always get two smaller pads and wire them in parallel and do it that way. So then again, you massage the pad to activate the adhesive and you're good to go. Now over here is my battery box, which is uh, where I have a lot of my uh, power leads. It's where I'm gonna hook into. And it's also really close to where I'm gonna be putting the switch plate. So this is where I'm gonna be running all of my wiring. And I'm gonna be using a red, a yellow and a black wire. The black is gonna be my ground. The yellow is gonna be positive for the gray tank and the red one's gonna be positive for the black tank. So just three wires there. And we're gonna run those down into the battery box. And now we're gonna pull out a long length of wire after you've kind of measured the distance with say a tape measure, give yourself a plenty of extra because it's, it's gonna be a lot better if you have extra than not enough. And we're gonna pull that out uh, to the basically the length that I figured out I was gonna need. And then here's a little trick for you with those wires taped together, you can put them in a drill and just close the chuck around them. And then you can twist those wires so they're actually gonna kind of twist together and that's gonna make pulling them through a lot easier because it's gonna kind of tie them into one wire make them seem more like one instead of three crazy wires that are bunching and turning into knots all over the place. So you can twist those up and then when you take it out, it's gonna, it's gonna unwind a bit when you let go of it, but that's okay. They're still gonna kind of stay together, which will make it a lot easier to deal with. Now we're gonna take our PVC protective wire sleeve right here 
and we're gonna feed that onto our wire. You may have to just open up the crease and put in your wire really slowly along the whole length. But if you buy some uh, PVC that's bigger than what you need, you might be able just to slip it on, which would be a lot easier and less time consuming. So now that we have that done, our wire is nice and protected, and we're gonna start running it from our power source right there through all the wires and all the way back to our box. You need to make sure that you don't get it into any pinch points. Don't run it through the springs or near the tires or the shocks, nothing that moves. And you just wanna kinda of keep it by the frame and the other wiring nice and protected. And then we're gonna zip tie that later once we get everything tied in uh, to our pads. So there we go, I've got enough wire over here. And again, you wanna kinda of figure out what your wire layout is gonna be and uh, then you can start cutting wires to length and stuff like that. Another little trick that I do when I'm splicing wires together like this, two wires, uh, especially a positive and a negative, is I'm gonna stagger the connection so if they ever come out of their connection or the electrical tape falls off or comes out of the thing, it's not gonna touch the other wire because it's at a different length. So you see that right there? If those ever get pulled, they're not gonna touch each other, they're still protected. So that's another little trick for you. Now I've got the red wire going to the red on, on the pad number one, I guess on the gray tank, and then pad number two has that yellow positive and both of the grounds are connected together. So now I'm just gonna tape up this little wire connector right here. It's also good to note that if you want to, you can totally ground to the frame. You can ground right here to the frame of the vehicle. That is an acceptable ground for these heating pads. I'm running a wire to the, to the power area but you could just tie to the frame and save yourself a little wiring. So now we're gonna put on more of that PVC protectant tubing here, because we've got everything already connected in the wire, wire nuts and we have everything kind of taped off. And so now we're just gonna protect all these wires from dirt and debris and all that good stuff. And when you get to all of your connections here, and even if you have a little bit of wire that won't fit in the PVC or the wire nuts don't fit in the PVC, that's okay, just tape everything with electrical tape. It's, the, it's doing the exact same job as the PVC tubing. It's just gonna protect those wires from uh, the elements. So once you get everything kind of crammed into the wires as much as you can, uh, you can just fold everything up and then tape it and you are gonna be good to go. So as soon as I'm done with that, you can see that we have a pretty good little connection here. Everything looks pretty well protected and secured like so. And now we can zip tie. So get your zip ties out, find anything that you can that's sturdy enough to keep that up out of the way. You want them up as high as possible. So they're not dangling down below and catching on sticks and rocks and debris while you're off road or anything like that. So you put up your twist ties, you cut off the access, and then you just keep moving. You keep moving around like that until you feel like everything's gonna stay out of, out of the way and in place. And if there's something that's a little too big for your zip tie, you can always zip two ties together which will make one big zip tie, which is what I had to do right here. In case you wanna go around something that's a little bigger but you don't have a zip tie big enough, just add two together. And then you're just gonna move on. You're gonna crawl around and just keep moving, making sure that you put a zip tie uh, every so often that's gonna keep it from sagging down below and uh, getting in the way of things. And so as we run all that along, you'll probably see some other wiring, uh, other wiring that runs in the same path and you may just wanna kinda of follow those because it's probably where the engineers thought it was best to put them. So make sure you zip tie everything out of the way, especially around the tires, avoiding all pinch points like the uh, springs. You don't wanna get it into any moving parts. And now we're gonna work our way towards the power cabinet. We'll see that's not so bad. Just running the wire is pretty easy. Um, in the next video part, we're gonna to get to how to wire this all in. I didn't want this to be a 30 minute video, so I'm gonna break it into two parts. But running the wire was pretty simple. And uh, now we've got that run to where our switch is gonna be. And so we're gonna to have to drill some holes and mount the plate and then wire everything into the battery system and to the switch plate. And we'll cover that in the next video that I will put as soon as I'm done talking here on the side. Don't forget, all the things that I used for this project will be in the little link down below that'll take you to a page with a whole list of stuff you can get off Amazon if you wanna do this exact project. And if this video helped you out, please like, share, subscribe. And uh, that'll wrap it up for part number one. I will see you in part number two as soon as you click that right over here. Take care and happy camping.